to another lesson, lesson 11, which is talking about Peter on the Great Controversy theme. And before we start, I want us to introduce the members who are here with us today. My name is Lance Otim, and I'm with uh, on my immediate left. Mpuga Roki Katana. Roki Katana. And Hope Kunihira. Hope Kunihira. You're welcome. And before we start, we're going to have a word of prayer from Sister Hope. Let's, Let's pray. Kind and loving Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you, Lord Father, for the opportunity that you've given us to cast this lesson. As we're going to start about Peter and the great controversy, come and digest for us what Peter meant for us and what choices we should make, Lord Father, to overcome the evil one, Lord Father. May the Holy Spirit guide us through the lesson as we study, and may we abide by what your word says. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Hope, and, uh, and welcome also, Brother Rocky. Now, let's do a brief introduction of what we're going to study this week. The previous week, we saw Paul telling us about the great controversy, and uh, we saw him using so many met metaphors uh, to, to bring out the light about the great controversy theme and how we, uh, how we should be able to stand. And one thing which was clear was he, he, he emphasized that Jesus Christ was victorious, and we can be victorious too if we have faith and if we obey, and we have to wear the armor of God. But this week we are going to look at Peter and what he understood by the great controversy. Now, unlike Paul, Peter walked with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and uh, first hand he slept with, uh, they slept in the same place, you know, and they walked together, they suffered together with Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, so that experience helped him uh, throw more light on the great controversy. He had uh, several experiences where Jesus, of course, warned him and told him, like, get behind me, Satan, and or warned him about him, denying him three times. And all those experiences showed him that actually the devil is real. He is working and he's fighting. And he, 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 he saw, like, he should warn other Christians, fellow Christians, and this great controversy came. So in this... Peter, on the great controversy, we want to look at a few things like uh, when Peter talks about we are a chosen generation who have been called out of darkness into light. We want to look at things uh, where he talks about warning us about peer pressure. And he, we are also going to look at uh, uh, when he tells us about having a more sure word of prophecy, uh, which we should take heed. Uh, we want to look at when Peter warns us against scoffers in the last days. And then we're going to see how we can be able to hasten Christ's second coming uh, by taking heed of all these words which he's going to share with us. The memory text, maybe uh, someone can read for us. The memory text, um, uh, which comes from the book of First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Can someone read for us, please? It reads, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. So, we are a chosen generation, royal priesthood. Now, uh, when we look at that verse and when we study deeper into it, there's one thing we realize about the similarity between that verse and, and its origin. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether, Rock, you can promulgate or hope about the origin of this verse from all the way uh, in the time of Israel, for example, uh, and how they were brought out of Egypt and they were being led to the promised land and why God used such words. Can you throw more light on that? Ah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Peter here says we're chosen generation. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back into the exodus of the Israel is right. children of Israel mm -hmm. uh, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 14, verse 2, where he talks about uh, where God makes a promise and he says uh, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. a holy nation, mm -hmm. uh, his own special people mm -hmm. that you may proclaim the praises of him. Mm -hmm. So he also talks about it the other end. Yeah. So we also see Peter at the same time uh, in his time, mm -hmm. the church in his time, mm -hmm. he also talks about the same thing mm -hmm. that we are during that time that he says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and peter he sees uh this he, he knows this great controversy in relation to the 
probably the uh, the whole of this week this great controversy is real just pass through his own life the kind of uh, scenarios he passed through uh, denying of Christ whereby sometimes Christ tells him please get out from me you devil so we see Peter when he talks about the great controversy he knows what exactly is happening so when he says as we shall see father that we are a chosen generation and this generation which is a, a royal priesthood and which has come which has been called from darkness to light so that we can be able to proclaim God's praises uh, we shall be able to see how Peter relates uh, the great controversy in his time and how we ourselves today as Christians can be able to learn from the experiences that he had. Thank you so much. I, hope, do you, I, I want you to explain to me, when Peter says, and when, uh, when God told Israel that they have been called out of darkness into light, they had just been delivered from Egypt. The question which I'm asking, which is very simple, which I want you to answer in just a few seconds or one minute, were the children of Israel perfect at this time? Because mm -hmm. God is using holy nation. Were they really holy or what? What do you understand by that phrase when the children of Israel have just come out of Egypt? And remember, in a short while, they actually started worshipping a golden calf. So, can you just throw more light and connect it to our time now? Uh uh, at that time when the children of Israelites were being delivered by Moses, uh, I think they were not that holy. Mm. Though we come to know that uh, that whatever happened to them was a fulfillment of God's promise because God had told Abraham about uh, the enslavement of his uh, of, of some generation of his, but then he had promised that I would deliver them after those uh, after a period of that time, and so we see that uh, time came that Christ says himself that he had heard the cries of his people. So uh, uh, we shouldn't say that uh, maybe they were not so holy, but at least they had some element. They had some element of holiness in them because they cried out to the Lord, and this was a set. This was a, a, a distinct group that Christ had chosen from the time of Abraham. Okay. This was Abraham's seed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe just to bring it back to perspective. Uh, let's say they weren't holy. Because we can see how they are behaving all along until all of them are destroyed except the children who reach the promised land and a few people like Caleb and Joshua. That no, I means think they were not perfect, right? Yes, they were not no, perfect, that, but there are some examples of them that were perfect. Yeah, now yes. that's why I'm saying this promise was given to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And that tells us that it gives, it paints a picture on how God saves. I, I don't know if you're seeing that. It tells us that God does not save by works. It's not that they were saved because they were... Actually, several times God tells Israel that I, I, do, not, I do not choose you because you are better than all the other nations. Mm -hmm. No, I choose you because of the promise I made with my servant, Abraham. You see that? So, in other words, when we bring it back to our time, it tells us also, let's read the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5. Maybe we can pick, it, pick it, some point from there. It shows us that God saves us by His grace and His grace alone. You see that? So, when it tells us that we are His royal priesthood, His chosen nation, that we may come out of darkness into His marvelous light, that's not a thing. He's telling us that we are still in progress. Mm -hmm. We are in that process. We are between the dark, darkest end and we are in between the perfection. Mm -hmm. We are in between here. We have been called from there and we are heading that It's way. a progress. It's a progress. Mm -hmm. So can you read Titus chapter 3 verse 5 please? Uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. uh, he saved us. Mm -hmm. It was not because of any good deeds that we ourselves had done. Amen. But because of his own mercy that he saved us through the Holy Spirit, who gives us new birth and new life by washing us. Amen. Amen. That shows you that uh, when, when God called, tells you about us being a royal priesthood, he has chosen us. We didn't choose him. True. I don't know whether you can see that. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have anything you might like to add in that part before we move to the next part? Uh, from darkness God, to light. Yeah, how God chooses us. And now we are a whole nation. That's the memory verse mostly. Uh, when, you, when you come to, 
when you read the Bible, darkness means you're in ignorance mm-hmm. of God's law. And when, and when light comes in, that means that you've acquired knowledge of, of, of what? Of, of God. So the children of Israelites, at the time that they were in, 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 in Egypt, yeah, we know God is everywhere. But at that time, Christ had shunned himself from them. But we see that uh, uh, at the fullness of God's time, he decides to bring these people out of darkness. Because we see that in Egypt, uh, people lived a lot of, uh, uh, they were so much godless. Mm-hmm. And it was only the children of Israelites that had tried to maintain the way of worship that God intended man to, mm-hmm. to, to live. But then we see that much as also uh, some of them uh, uh, tried to, to live accordingly, there are those that had been corrupted by the by the Egyptians living and that's why we see that as children of Israelites go out mm-hmm. to, to 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 the new world as they're exploring we see that many times they fall and it's because of these few Israelites and then also their heart that that the hearts that had so much adapted their living that they had so much fallen to the extent that much as they were on their journey mm-hmm. still the devil always you know uh, managed to pull them down. But then uh, Paul here wants to, to, to link this to, to the children of Israelites that brings, or oh, Peter, he tries to tell us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Why? It's because God chose us to be like this. And therefore he wants us to have that in exactly. memory. Exactly. So that we can work towards coming yes and exactly and so if you bear the light of christ uh peter is telling you uh since you didn't choose your soul but by 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 god's grace he makes you a a royal person okay he's expecting you not to sit on that since you're the light of the world uh please come out and shine shine to the to the world so that every people everyone uh sees christ and comes to him because we know that uh, salvation is universal. It's not only for the people who proclaim to know God. Hope, I'm going to just cut you short mm-hmm. because we, our time is running so fast. We have about 10 or 15 more minutes. Now, I want us to look at another part of, of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. And we're going to look at what Peter warned about peer pressure in the, in, in the Bible, especially in chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. I'm going to read through very fast. Then you're going to tell me what you think about peer pressure and our lifestyle. How do we react when some people try to push us into what they think? Let me read it. It says, chapter 4 of First Peter, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. It says, For as much then as Christ has suffered in the, for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the, the quick and the dead. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to them according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Now, when we look at that verse or those verses, we see uh, Peter trying to warn us again against our past. That in previously we were drunk. We used to go to drink, we used to go to banquetings, we used to do all these things with some people. But now they're even surprised and they sit back and they're like, hey, why is Rocky not joining us? And they might even come and try to push you there and tell you, Man, what's happening? And, and why aren't you joining us? But we have left those past ways. Why? Because God has delivered us from Egypt, spiritual Egypt. And now we're moving into, into, our, into, into the new light. I, I don't know. What, what, what do you think about our life lifestyle choices? How should we make choices in our life? And how, how do they affect the readiness of Christ's return? 
uh, uh, through this part of peer pressure, mm -hmm. uh, we got to know uh, Peter comments that believers have already spent enough, uh, mm -hmm. in, have already spent enough time mm -hmm. uh, in their of their lives doing what others around them have pressured them to do, mm -hmm. and we also get to see that uh, uh, that Satan will do whatever it takes even to use our former friends mm. or maybe our former colleagues, our former community, so that he can be able to discourage us mm. uh, in our walk with God. Mm. But again, Peter goes on ahead and says that uh, Peter admonishes believers to be kind and loving to those we come in contact with. Mm. Because we cannot, uh, we've been, we're in the world, how much we cannot be part of it, uh, uh, but the reality is we're in and we're supposed to be loving. We're supposed to show kindness uh, to these people we are, we are always with. And he also goes ahead that we need to pray, not for not only for them, but also that we would also allow God to make us more sensitive to their concerns, because because we well know that the world we are in and the people around us, Satan is going to use them to discourage us our work with God. So we should be prayerful. It's one of the greatest uh, tools we can use in that we be prayerful, not only for them, but also God to make us sensitive. To their concerns. Amen. In other words, let's not be affected by what what are they saying, but rather let's concentrate in our spiritual work, mm -hmm. concentrate in understanding more of God. And somewhere, several times uh, uh, in the Bible, especially mm -hmm. in Romans chapter twelve, it says, "Do not repay evil with evil, yeah. but overcome mm -hmm. evil with good." In other words, do not go attacking these people. That will be boring you down with a lot of work. Concentrate in doing good even to these people who are who are, who are, who are actually trying to, 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 to judge you. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the more sure word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now when we talk about the more sure word of prophecy, I think someone should read for us where that verse appears in the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse nineteen, I believe. Maybe we could start from verse sixteen, seventeen, eighteen and nineteen. Second Peter chapter one chapter one from verse sixteen mm -hmm. to twenty one. It says, "We have, uh, we have, we have not depended on man-made, on made stories. We have not depended on made-up stories in making known to you the mighty coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. With our own eyes, we saw His greatness. We were there when He was given honor and glory by God the Father. When the voice came to Him from the supreme glory, saying, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am pleased.'" We ourselves heard this voice coming from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we are even more confident of the message proclaimed by the prophets. By the prophets. You, will do, you will do well to pay attention to it because it is like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the light of the morning star shines in your heart. Above all else, however, remember that none of us can explain by ourselves a prophecy in the scriptures for no prophetic message ever came just from the human will but people were under the control of the holy spirit as they spoke the message that came from god amen by the fact that it came from god it makes it a very sure word of prophecy now maybe a, a point which comes clear here is that why is peter using all these words he's trying to show us that how can a christian remain faithful have a faithful walk with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I think this is what Peter is trying to bring up uh, up here, and he tries to throw into 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 place some several examples of mm -hmm. of, of his his personal walk with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the experience he had. He tells you about. Uh, I think in I think we can see a hint on transfiguration. Can you see it somewhere in, yeah. the, in those verses? Yeah. He talks about in verse eighteen. Eighteen. I, I hope. Can you can you read it again? What does it say? In verse eighteen. That's we ourselves had this voice coming from heaven. Yeah, that, that shows us about the transfiguration. In other words, it's trying to show you that I had a walk with God, and I know what it means to have a taste of a walk with God. This is how you can remain faithful. And one of the things he tells us is about, let's take heed of the more sure word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's so sure. Why, 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 why should we say that this word of prophecy is a, it's a sure word? Why, do, do, can you throw more light? First of all, all the prophet, all the all the prophets which have been which have been spoken are from mm. God Himself. Mm. It's God who spoke them. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere I think we can see God saying, "Let there be." Mm -hmm. That makes us sure that 
since God has said and it was, it can still be a show word of prophecy. Can you see that? Mm, yeah. What else can we see about the why, why should the word of prophecy be very sure? What other promises did you were promised in the Old Testament which I which were fulfilled? Oh the birth of Jesus Christ, right? Yes, yes. Uh, indeed we see a lot of things Hello. which have been Fulfilled. promised and have been fulfilled Amen. and uh and 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 as we also look probably in our previous lesson mm -hmm. uh, we talk, we talked about uh, these things which were uh, uh all those things we are being talked about they're going to be fulfilled and uh when we see even like we talked we had talked about uh, in our previous lesson about the uh, about the probably the scoffers mm -hmm. that when we see such things are happening because God said, and they happened. Mm -hmm. And when we also see that them happening today, since they were prophecy, mm -hmm. they give us more assurance that whatever has been said of in the Bible, mm -hmm. it gives us more assurance that it will happen again. It will happen. Again. It, will happen. It, it must happen by all means. Can, can you? Can can we? Let's try to hope. Can you remember some prophecies which Jesus Christ gave? I remember Jesus told his disciples so many prophecies. I don't know if you remember. So many, like in chapter 14, about his second coming. Mm -hmm. And there were even other prophets which he gave them. You know, prophets about something which is yet to come. Mm -hmm. Can you highlight some prophets which you can remember, especially which he told those of his disciples when they were together, which became fulfilled and others which are, which are yet to be fulfilled? Just uh, Some of the examples. Uh, Christ uh, told his, 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 his disciples that there will be time of trouble. And when that time of trouble comes, uh, make sure you just, you know, you leave, it, it, you leave, leave Jerusalem. Yes. But then, but then we realize that actually the time that prophecy came to, to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. uh, uh, most of the, the disciples were not prepared because mm -hmm. it called them unaware. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. And even another thing we can also see about the prophets, Jesus also foretold them. Not only was it in the scriptures, but he also told them that, you know what, in, in a few days, the Son of Man will be taken to Jerusalem, he will be arrested, and he will be killed. Mm -hmm. And they still they didn't believe others were like, he will, he will resurrect again. We can see Thomas doubted. Mm -hmm. Now, all those experiences which we are seeing, Peter was watching and was like, ah, there's nothing which Jesus said which didn't get fulfilled. And therefore, here he emphasizes that word of prophecy which Jesus gave is very sure mm -hmm. and it can only be understood by the holy spirit mm -hmm. now we but we realize that even even though we have all these prophecies which will be fulfilled even we as in the last days mm -hmm. we also have scoffers yeah. people who will be who will be like ah, those things cannot happen can, can you say something about scoffers what, what do you think how should we how should we guard ourselves against scoffers and what are these scoffers who are scoffers okay so Scoffers. What does, what does Peter say about the scoffers? Scoffers, we we can take them as people who mock, who mm. mock at us. Yes. Uh, in the book of Second Peter, verse three, uh, chap, uh, chapter three, verse three to seven, Peter talks about these scoffers, and it, he warns us actually, tell, telling us not to be intimidated by these godless people. Mm. Uh, these are people who come and try to to make you doubt the word of God because they keep telling you uh, Christ is not coming. You've been waiting for Christ since since uh, maybe time memorial because, for instance, us as Adventists, we know that we are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. So people can tell you the same things have happened. A lot of things come and go, but where is your God? God is not coming back. And actually, you come to realize that uh, when Christ said, I'm coming soon, hmm? mm. Because of that word of saying, I'm coming soon, and he has not yet come, uh, apparently the word soon now loses meaning. Because when someone says, I'll be there soon, you're like, how soon is soon? Mm. You know, uh, people are trying to, to make the, the soon word. In the human context. Exactly. But when Christ says that I'm coming soon, he means what he says. Mm. So these coffers were, were trying to tell these people that the God you're waiting for is not coming. So there is no... No need for you to try to to wait for him and try to to live a separate life from ours, but then Peter goes on and tells us that the same God that held the waters of the floods, okay, 
that destroyed the earth is the same God that is still holding the fires that are going to destroy the world. So we should not be intimidated when people tell us that God is not coming back. We still have that living hope and it should be in us till, uh, till Christ comes back. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, what else can we uh, do to guard ourselves against this kind of scoffers uh, as Christians in the last days? Mm -hmm. Because uh, by the way, do you still believe that we have scoffers these last days? Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. On, on a are... daily basis, we meet them. Okay, please uh, say how we can guard ourselves uh, against that. You know, scoffers, these are the people who come and mock. Mm -hmm. They have been there during the time of, uh, during even the Old Testament. They were there during the time of Peter. And even up to date, they are there. Mm -hmm. And they will keep on saying, uh, our grandfather said this. Uh, our, even our father said this. But he's nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. But we as Christians, mm -hmm. we should be assured of one thing. Mm -hmm. If God has surely promised that he will come, mm -hmm. he will surely come again. Mm -hmm. We look unto when God said, uh, when, when, when God told man in the Garden of Eden, when he told Adam mm -hmm. that if you eat on this fruit, you will surely die. Mm -hmm. And then Satan comes up and says, no, I'm you won't sure. surely die. Mm -hmm. But at last, man died. died. So we also go ahead and um, God talks through his uh, prophets. Uh, he talks through Noah that there will be the end. Mm -hmm. th there will be floods. Mm -hmm. And some people still say it. That can't happen because it has never happened, but it surely had to happen. Mm -hmm. So we've been seeing the fulfillment of oh, these all the words of, all the words of God of Jesus Christ. So up to now, we as Christians, the same God who destroyed the earth with the floods will again destroy this earth with fire, as he said. So as Christians, let us hold on to the promise of his coming. And if he has said, I'm going, I'm coming soon, let's stay prepared for his coming. Thank you so much. That implies from what I can hear from Hope and Yuroki is that whatever word God has spoken has been fulfilled. And if it has not been fulfilled, it will, it will be fulfilled. actually be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The problem is that our lifespan is not sh is so short that sometimes we do not come to see the fulfillment of his, mm -hmm. of these prophecies. Mm -hmm. But God is eternity. Mm -hmm. And somewhere he has told us that one day for him is it's a, like thousand, a thousand years. And a thousand years to it's him like... is like... So he can, he can expand one day and see all the details through a thousand years, mm -hmm. and yet you can compress the thousand years to just one day. Mm -hmm. That implies that the problem is on our side. But all that we can do as Christians is trust God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if we do not see the promise in our lifetime, let's still have hope that one day it will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Now, we should work that. We should Now that we have known that Christ will surely come, and though he hasn't come, we should work towards history. He's coming. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the book of Second Peter, someone should read it. Second Peter chapter chapter three, verse eight to fourteen. What second Second Peter mm -hmm. chapter three from verse eight. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from NIV. Mm -hmm. But do not forget one thing, my dear friends. Mm -hmm. There is no difference in the Lord's sight between one day and a thousand years. Mm -hmm. To him the two are the same. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, mm -hmm. as some think. Instead, he is patient with you, because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, mm -hmm. but wants all to turn away from their sins. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a shrill noise. The heavenly bodies will burn up and be destroyed. And earth with everything in it will vanish. Since all these things will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? Your lives should be holy and dedicated to God as you wait for the day of God and do your best to make it come soon. The day when the heavens will burn up and be destroyed and the heavenly bodies will be melted by the heat. But we wait but we wait for what God has promised. New heavens and a new earth where righteousness will be at home. And so my friends, as you wait for that day, do your best to be pure and faultless in the God's sight and to be at peace with him. Thank you so much. Actually, in those verses, yeah. we are seeing some great highlights. Number one, we are seeing that the timing of the Lord may not be our timing. True. But on the other hand, it also says that, okay, even though His timing is not our timing, mm -hmm. God has set a time when all these things will do what? They will happen. They will happen. Now, the question is, what kind of attitude should we have? He highlights them in that verse. Mm -hmm. Can someone say about the attitude which He says? Because He's trying to tell us that Though we, scoffers are there who are mm -hmm. telling us that you guys are waiting forever, 
though we are seeing like it's taking so long and we, we have always thought he's coming in our time maybe he, he, he was coming our grandparents then he doesn't mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. he's saying no there's a time set and 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 somewhere he says in the fullness of time yeah. something will always happen mm-hmm. so we know that in the fullness of time jesus christ will sure do what okay. but then peter is telling us that we sh- there's a way we should live can, can can you highlight some points which peter gives us uh, hope on how we should live because he's trying to tell us that we should live in a certain way and and and, 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 and maybe rock can also tell us how does living that will help us as christians yes uh, <clears throat> peter expects our attitudes hmm, mm-hmm. to reflect our conduct and he expects us to be blameless mm-hmm. and to live a pure life uh, what does it mean to to live a pure life as a Christian, or to live <clears throat> a blameless life? We've seen uh, very many examples, okay, few I should say, of people in the Bible who try to live, uh, I should say, pure lives. And one that we come to see was Job. Uh, this was evidence from the book of Job, one one, where Satan was trying to was was having a chat with God and and God tell, told him how proud he was in his servant uh Job uh we see a man like Enoch those are people who who lived a pure life meaning if they live uh for instance Job if he lived now then uh he would be ready to receive Christ but yes i know very well that yes he lived uh because we don't see any in his account where we say that he gave in to the devil. So the Bible is calling us to also live the lives that these people lived, the, the, the pure people. Uh, they also, uh, we come to see that these people, uh, they also went through temptations as we are. Uh, very many trials came their way. But because they had the Christ in them, they could uh they they were able to discern good from evil because we see job again let me bring back his example he lost his children uh, he lost a lot of his property his life itself was was not a healthy one mm-hmm. but we see that despite all the painful trials that he went through because he had he had a pure heart because a pure heart is that heart that is not defiled. Job kept on with that living hope in him. He knew that whatever has happened, it's according to God's will. Amen. And if God has decided it to happen, then he knows why it has happened. Okay. And we have to know that uh, whenever we are faced with such trials, as Christians, since Christ overcame them, and we have also these witnesses like the Jobs, it means we are not different from them. We can always overcome whenever we are faced with such temptations. Mm-hmm. We learn that whenever you're, you're faced with, with a problem and then God keeps quiet, he knows you're strong enough to, to overcome whatever you're going through and he knows you'll be able to make it. He will provide. He will provide. So let's not give up that habit of, of, of keeping the living hope in us because uh, if we do, at the end we'll be victorious. And when Christ returns, we'll be among the number that will that he will introduce to his father like these are the people that have kept these are the people that have kept the faith of jesus christ so we won't go to heaven without passing through trials you know but we can live a blameless life because christ overcame sin thank you so much uh, rocky would you like to uh, comment something uh, shortly mm-hmm. uh, here on hastening hastening the day yes uh, in verse 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 12 mm-hmm. of chapter 3 of the second peter mm-hmm. says as you wait for the day of god mm-hmm. and do your best to make it come soon mm-hmm. how do we make how do we do our best to make the day of come the lord soon. come soon yes, uh, here is let us say that being blameless should be our aim. Mm-hmm. how should we uh, be blameless mm-hmm. uh, he talks about fearing god and shunning evil. we should say our aim should be fearing the lord and taking away, putting away evil, yeah. and he also goes ahead and he says uh, that we should be able to. That, that that's the only that's the only time when he will be able to present us to God, the Father. Yes, because if we are not 
blameless, mm-hmm. then we cannot be presented to. And for us to be blameless, we shall be, we let us uh, fear the Lord and shun away the evil. And by doing this, by being ready, we ourselves, we shall bring the day of the Lord. Thank you so much. Maybe another thing I also want to comment is in verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things. I I like that part. Mm -hmm. In other words, that is like future looking. Yeah. You have that hope. We are looking into the country who is maker is God himself. Mm -hmm. Now that you are looking towards such things, he says, be diligent. Do you know, it it gives me a picture of an athlete Mm -hmm. who is running. Mm -hmm. But his goal is he can run. Of course, he cannot maintain the same speed if he's running 100 meters. He cannot maintain the same speed for one kilometer. But because he's seeing that the end is near and it's there, he runs with a lot of vigor and diligence. Mm -hmm. So I think Peter is trying to bring this picture that we may be blameless and let let the goal give us the vigor, the energy to be blameless and diligent. Mm-hmm. I, I want us to finish this lesson of Peter uh, and the great controversy uh, and, and I want you to highlight in summary some lessons which we have learned about Peter on the great controversy. Mm-hmm. Uh, on my part, I think one thing you can see is Peter is telling us that let's take heed of the prophecies. The prophecies of Jesus Christ, the prophecies in the Bible will surely come to, to pass. One of the great Greatest prophecy which we saw even in the in, in lesson ten is about is in, is about the death which will be destroyed in the end. Christ is the winner finally. Peter is also nailing the same point down. He's saying finally we shall be victorious regardless of the scoffers, regardless of the challenges we go through. Let's be blameless. Let's keep the hope burning. Why? Because God's prophecies will always come true. I don't know what lessons you learned in one minute or a few seconds as we finish this uh, As to be, when we go back to to the memory verse, yes. uh, we are where it says that, uh, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. So, if God has chosen us, if we if if we are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, we have still an obligation. That is to proclaim the praises of Him who has taken us from the darkness. That means it's an obligation for you, Lens, for me, Rocky, for my sister Hope, that we also do this. We take the same praises. We we, we go and proclaim the same message mm-hmm. to the other person, so that we can also be able to even test them on the day by bringing more other people, by bringing more souls into the light. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we see Peter as a keynote to people who, who, are, who are overcome by the devil. Uh, from his experiences, much as he was so next to Christ, because to him he loved Christ more than any other disciple did. Hmm? And so when God tells him, uh, you will deny me three times. Peter says, no. Mm-hmm. You get. Mm-hmm. And so when, uh, when, when the time comes and uh, what Christ tells him comes to be fulfilled, Peter gets embarrassed. Mm-hmm. So when Peter tells you, uh, rather, when, when, when Peter tells us that we... We have to be careful because uh, we we saw in First Peter chapter one five eight where himself says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour." He understood it. He understood it yeah. very well because he was in the same shoes. Mm-hmm. So he knows uh, what the devil can do to a person who claims to be standing. The Bible tells us that if you're standing, make sure you're what? You're upright and you, you're not capable of, of falling. Be careful, right? You have to be careful. Okay. So Peter calls us, uh, those who've got a chance, the royal people that Christ has, has called out. He calls us that, fine, if we know the Christ that has called us is holy, mm-hmm. he's calling us to desert anything that is worldly because it tells us if there is any time that you've prayed this is the time you have to pray the more because there is no way that we can overcome the devil other than having the prayer weapon as part of us as christians so he calls us to be prayerful and he calls us to leave the world 
we have to leave all the lust that the world is putting in our faces but only and only cling to the word of god because you know very well that we are in the last days and the spirit of god now we are in the preparation time so don't expect the spirit to come to you when you're making yourself busy no the spirit is only going to avail to the people that are welcoming it and how are we going to 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 together spirit is by always searching the word of god and keeping in tune with with christ and christ's words and following his example thank you so much uh, uh, members rocky and hope and viewers uh, i think it's important that we know that we are a chosen generation and god is ready to use us god's promises will be fulfilled and uh, the devil is powerful and uh, we should be careful because it's like a rolling lion mm -hmm. but let's have hope because finally uh, we shall be victors through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for participation in this lesson. And before we finish, let me ask uh, someone to pray. Who, who would like to pray with us, please? Someone can pray with us. Can okay, finish. let's pray. The most loving Father in heaven, once again, also want to thank you uh, that you've, uh, your Holy Spirit has enlightened us mm -hmm. and we've been able to learn much more about the world and also the viewers whom we've shared with Father. Thank you very much. It's our prayers. It's our prayer, Father, that uh, as we wait for thy second coming, prepare us. And as we also look onto that day, Father, we pray that all the people, Father, we shall be able to bring more onto their, their, their souls unto Father, thy kingdom, Father. Father, we thank you that you've blessed us. We thank you you've carried us through the whole of this discussion. Be with us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you too. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth, it sounds as music to my ear, the sweet